Hello and welcome to the VBA Jetpack course by Trump Excel. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video we would be writing the first code of this course. So let's jump in right away. Here I have a workbook with the name book 1 and I have entered these text elements here in these cells. So I have the name and the course name here and then I have the name, my name and my course names here below these headers. We have also italicized these cells and we have also given a background color to it. So what we will do in this video is we will try and do all these things using VBA so that we don't have to do this manually. We can simply click a button or run the code and all this is done automatically. And that's it. We will do the, just this in this video and while doing this we will learn a lot of things. Now before we start writing the code, uh, in case you come across anything that you do not understand, don't worry about it. Each and every element that I cover in the coding in this video would also be covered in great detail in this course in subsequent videos. So don't worry about anything. If you come across anything that you do not understand, just make a mental note of it or just write it somewhere or uh, put that in the comment below and I will respond with, with the clarification and just be patient and we would go through this course and then we would uncover a lot of things things, new things uh, that would help you in understanding VBA language better. So let's get started. The first thing that I would do is I would go into the VB editor. So to do that I would press Alt F11 and when I do that here I have the project explorer. I do not have any code window. So the first thing I would do is I would insert a module. I would right click on this and I would go to insert module. You can also go to the insert menu here and press on module. Now I have these modules folder inserted along with module 1. I can click and I can check the properties. If you want you can change uh, the name of the module. Let's say we would change the name to enter details. So this is the name of our module now. Now here in the code window as of now it's blank. We would start writing the code with the line sub and after sub I would have the name of the of uh, the macro and in this case let's keep it enter details now when I have written the word sub and the name of the macro and I hit enter see what happens two things happen here it automatically introduces these empty parentheses and it introduces this line end sub because this is how VBA works. Any code that goes in the win code window would be between these two lines which is sub module name, sub uh, macro name and end sub. And here uh, we have the space where we can write the code. Now if you are a newbie in, in writing code in VBA, uh, I would recommend that you use the feature of using comments. So if I have to write any comment, I can simply uh, press apostrophe key and then write a comment, say comment 1. And now when I hit enter, it becomes green in color, which is an indication that this is a comment. Now a comment is not processed by VBA. If I run this code, this would be ignored. It is for the user because if you are a newbie, it would make sense to have many comments so that you would know what this line of code or what this chunk of code is doing. So I recommend that you use these uh, this quite often so that uh, you would not be lost while you relook at the macro. Now let's say we would we can write this macro enters name and details. So now whenever I look back to this macro I would know that this macro was made so that we can enter the name and details here. Now the first thing that I want to do here is I want to insert a new worksheet. I have this worksheet already here. I want to insert a new worksheet and have this entire thing in the new worksheet. So to do that the first thing that I would do is I would add the worksheet by using the worksheets object. Now if you remember the previous video, the, f the second video I guess where uh, I mentioned an example where I had to deliver a package to Sherlock Holmes and when I give it to the postal department they first look at the country and the country is UK then within UK they look at the city which is London then then street which is Baker Street then they identify the house and then within that house they deliver the package to the person who is Sherlock Holmes so by that logic we can also qualify the same thing we can apply the same thing here which means that I need to add a worksheet and to add a worksheet I first need to tell VBA 
what I need to do I need to use some property some method of the worksheets collection so when I write worksheets and then I put a period here or a dot here it shows me this IntelliSense and this IntelliSense has all the members of the worksheets collection which means that now I can add a worksheet I can copy a worksheet I can count the number of worksheets and there these are all these things if you remember uh, this indicates a property while, the, while this flying cube green color cube indicates a method a method could be like an action so in this case what I need to do is I need to add a worksheet and this is it this one line code would add a new worksheet in this workbook what I am asking Excel to do using this code is I'm asking it to look at worksheets collection and within that collection add another object which would be a worksheet so now let's see what happens when I run this code I would come to the toolbar and I would press this green button as soon as I press the green button and see here it's sheet 1 as of now when I press this it becomes sheet 2 sheet 2 has been inserted and now that becomes my active sheet so now with this line of code I know that if I run this then it would insert a new worksheet and you can also see that sheet appears here now the second thing is to enter these elements which is name course name my name and my course name so I would use let's go back by pressing F alt F11 I would use the range object and the range object is used if you want to refer to uh, any cell or a range of cells in Excel so if you have anything to do with cell then you would use the range object and when I start the parenthesis you see it says cell 1 comma cell 2 as range as range means that it would return a range and here it is asking for cell 1 and cell 2 cell 1 would be the top left leftmost cell and cell 2 would be the uh, bottom rightmost cell so for example here in case I want to select say a1 to b2 this entire thing here I would type a1 comma b2 and it would select this entire thing but I don't want that I only want to refer to one single cell which is cell a1 here so I would make it range a1 this goes within double quotes and then I would put a period here or a dot here and again you can see it shows me the IntelliSense this IntelliSense has all these members of the range object what I'm interested in is value which means that range even dot value would refer to the content within this cell and I want this value to be name now let's see what happens when I when we run these two lines of code let me uncheck this I would press alt f11 and now when I run this code see what happens it's sheet 2 here when I run this it inserts sheet 3 here and it inserts the name here in cell a1 now all I need to do is I need to replicate this line copy paste it and then put the right cell reference in this case it would be b1 and here I'm asking for course name and then again I will copy paste it here in a2 it would be my name Sumit Bansal and in b2 it would be this VBA courses name which would be VBA jetpack now if you look at this code you would understand what we are trying to do here is we would insert a new worksheet and then we would have these four cells fill these four cells with these text so let's run this code again if I press this green button instantly what happens is it comes here to sheet 4 and it inserts this element I forgot to change this reference to B2 so now when I make this B2 and now I run this code again it does exactly what I wanted the name is here course name is here my name is here and the courses name is here now I also want to do two more things I want to italicize these headers and I want to insert a color to it uh, give it a background color so again I would press alt F11 and here I would have to write two more line of code the first one would be range a1 is to b1 now if you have a contiguous range of cells you can also use this methodology where you can simply type a1 is to b1 and it would 
select this entire thing and then whatever you ask this to do would be applied to this entire range and what I want here is I want to change the font property and font property here if you type F here it will show you all the elements here in this IntelliSense so I want to change the font property and within font I want to change the italics and here range.font.italic and I want to say this should be true now if you are getting confused with all these terminologies and all these objects and members uh, don't worry about it it comes with practice as you would watch these videos again and again and you start try and apply this uh, and you start doing it yourself then you would get more comfortable but the idea here is that range is an object within that object we were looking at the property which is font within font we wanted to change this property which is italics so this entire thing would go to this range and make it true the italic property of this range which is a1 and a2 these would become italicized now let's see how this works let's run this code again so when I press on this green button sheet 6 is inserted now it has inserted everything along with the italicized uh, font for these two cells the last thing that I want to do is give a background color to it so to do that I would again go to range a1 is to B1 and here I would use the interior property interior dot color and when I use interior dot color it would know that now whatever I apply here whatever I mention here should be applied to the interior dot color property which means that it should give a background color to it now uh, these things these, these words uh, you might not know from the beginning so you have to actually know that this means interior would actually qualify this for the background color uh, recording a macro is a great way to know if you do not know about these objects or you can also go through the object browser and now here in color I have two ways of doing it either I can use the inbuilt color so VB already has some inbuilt colors such as say VB blue and here if I press control spacebar it would force the IntelliSense so IntelliSense would be forced here and it would match what I'm writing here so it says VB black VB blue these are colors that I can apply and these are inbuilt colors so let's go with VB blue and let's see how it looks so let's run this code again see this is sheet 6 when I run it a new sheet is inserted here this is sheet 7 and it has done what is what it it is asked to do but this blue color looks hideous it's uh, not something that is uh, uh, looking good and you cannot read the text inside it so this is not something that we want to uh, apply here so let's go and change it now instead of using the inbuilt colors because these inbuilt colors are limited you can use the RGB function where you can give the red green and blue value now any color in VBA has the RGB component to it so let's let's first go back here and let's say what would look good maybe we can apply this color and this looks good here now we can fetch the RB RGB value of it if I go back here and I go to more colors you can see this color has the RGB component 189 215 238 so I would use this part 189 215 238 here so I would say RGB 189 215 oops 215 and 238 so now I have given the RGB numbers now let's see what happens when I run this here it is sheet 7 I go back again I run this it becomes sheet 8 I have all the elements I have it italicized and I have the color mission accomplished I have what I needed and this is the code that does it and it's a simple code it adds the worksheet here it applies the it enters these text strings in the cells applies an italic italicized font and a background color so this is a simple macro where we have learned how to write a simple macro and then execute it uh, now let's go through a couple of additional things that comes with writing a macro 
uh, let's say that you don't want to run this entire macro at one go you want to run one line at a time so that maybe you want to identify where is the error or you want to identify what each line is doing sometimes the codes become big and complex and we need to uh, go through each line one uh, one at a time so VB has a functionality here if I go to debug I have something called as step into and step into means that it will go through each and every line and it will execute each line one after the other and I have the control when I press this button or I press F8 it would then move to the next line so let's see how this works here I have sheet 8 as of now I go here and I press F8 as soon as I press F8 you can see that I have this yellow shade on this line along with this yellow arrow what this means is that now when I press F8 again the next line this line would be executed and then the next line would become shaded you can also see here it says book one break this is in the break mode which means that the VBA has not yet completely executed it's in the break mode here so now let's see one by one what happens I press F8 it goes to this line nothing happens here but see what happens when I execute this line this is sheet 8 I press F8 and instantly a new sheet has been introduced and it comes to this line now I press F8 again it enters the name I press F8 again it enters the uh, course name text string in B1 then again and again so it enters all these text now if I press F8 again it italicize these cells and now if I press F8 again this color has been applied to these cells so what happens here is I'm going through this code one by one remember you're still in the break mode if you do not press F8 again or you uh, run this code or you uh, reset this code because you're still in the break mode so make sure that you get out of the break mode whenever you use this technique so let's close this now uh, the last thing that I want to cover here is what if I want to save this file to save this file go to file save as and here I would save it on the desktop and here the name is book1.xlsx now see what happens when I save this file it gives me a prompt the following features cannot be saved in macro free workbooks which is VB project the reason it shows this is because this is dot XLSX format which cannot hold macros so if your file has macros then you need to save it in either Excel macro enabled workbook which is dot XLSM format or dot XLS format if you're using any feature which are uh, in the new version of Excel say for example if error or you're using uh, some new features functionalities uh, such as the timeline feature in pivot tables then you may want to save it in dot XLSM format so if I select this format here it becomes book one dot XLSM and now I can save this so now this workbook has been saved you can see the name here becomes book one dot XLSM if I go to the VB editor here also it says book one dot XLSM because now even the format is uh, visible here now let's close this workbook and open it again now when I open this workbook it shows me this security warning which is macros have been disabled and whenever I have this setting here whenever I open a workbook which has macros then it gives me this yellow prompt this bar and I have to enable content if I don't do that then see what happens I would go to the developer tab macros I would run this macro but it says because of your security settings macros have been disabled so to run macros you need to reopen this workbook let's do that let's close this let's reopen the workbook and here I would enable content and as soon as I do that now I can run this macro if I go here I select this macro and I run it I would be able to do it now it has become it has a sheet 10 here so to change macro settings you can go to the file option and within options here you can go to trust center in trust center go to trust center settings and within trust center dialog box here you have macro settings 
in this case I have selected this option disable all macros with notification if you want you can select disable all macros without notification but in that case the macro would be disabled you would not even know that it exists so this is the best option to go with you can also enable all macros but that is not recommended because there could be uh, viruses there could be other potentially harmful uh, actions that the macro can take it might delete some important files or it might uh, do something to your desktop or your laptop or your PC that may be may not be required so it's always best to have disable all macros with notification option enabled so that's it in this video I hope you found this video useful thank you and have a nice day